on the couch. With <laughs> on Tess. the couch. <laughs> First time we, no, second time we're recording in the same room. That's true, yeah. But we thought we were going to put it on video, so. Yeah, because you guys wanted videos. So here we are trying to make a video. We hope it's going to go good. And yeah. Yeah. Let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> cool. So the idea for the this episode and the next one is to actually talk about a little bit more about us. <laughs> we're going to start with me today. And um, we just thought, I thought recently that a lot of people had assumptions about pilots in general, whether it's you, me, or people have assumptions about Mr. Steele, um, <laughs> you know, and, and when I invite them, when in, when I invite people in, a, in, in my episodes, um, lots of people listening to the podcast actually realized that they didn't know much the personality they're like it's great podcast because we apparently managed to show the personality of people we invite and i'm like why are, are we not just doing it to ourselves too <laughs> yeah it's it's like a lot i mean it's easy to make assumptions about people a lot of us are probably doing it because i don't know you see someone on the street and you're like oh i bet this person is doing this or that and it's easy to do it yeah. I hear a lot of assumptions about myself. Some of them are great. Some of them I'm making fun of. Yeah. Some of them I'm trying to kind of make even more bizarre than they are. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just me being me. I hear about a lot of assumptions about you as well. And sometimes I'm like, why would you even like, why? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a, it's a little bit of, there's going to be talk about drones, obviously, in this yes. um, in these two episodes. But it's also going to be about us and where we come from and we are and you didn't want to start so i feel like I and I didn't, yeah i was i was thinking like if i will let you start then i will know how dark can i go <laughs> yes because <laughs> i didn't know how, like, dark. how far away i can go with this story <laughs> and i felt like if i'm going to just throw all of it that it only will be just sitting there like wow <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just i'm just gonna um i'm gonna set the level of darkness and depression <laughs> and then wow, and then you can copy right <laughs> we love it cool well well yeah let's get started the 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 goal of this episode is to start, I'm going to not obviously tell everything about my life, but more like where I come from and stuff like that. Someone today actually told me they thought I was from, where did they think, uh, they thought I was from one of those northern countries, like not Finland, like Norway. Oh, Norway, yeah. And I'm like, what? And they said, oh, I'm just an American and I hear a different accent and then I make assumptions. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't why? sound from why Norway. Norwegian? Anyway, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I great. come from friends, right? Yes. Um, I was born in 1991, <laughs> March and, 1991. And great pastries in France, by the way, we've been today. <laughs> we just got, we just got some pastry. <laughs> we have some in the fridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I was born in France. Um, I grew up in the country, not really like in big cities, um, with my two parents. I'm an only child. And um, and very early on, I got an education by my parents, like a non-gendered type of education, okay. which is interesting because they're very conservative. And to be oh. honest, I feel like the reason why they were making it um, non-gendered is because they thought girls' toys were stupid. <laughs> which actually, you know, since I have a nephew, I absolutely agree with. I went to the boys' section. I was like, there's so much cool stuff in here. And then I went to the girls' section. I was like, yeah. um, <laughs> so I get it. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, that's. I, I grew up in a very, like, non-gendered universe, which I do think it happened. Like, that's made me who I'm, I am these days, you know, doing drone stuff and lots of things. But anyway, I did that. And when I was younger, when I was around six years old, I discovered karate on TV. Uh, I saw one guy called Michael Milong, which was um, a French athlete competing for the world championship at the time. I saw him doing um, technique. So we call that kata or technique. And I was looking at the TV and I told my parents, I want to do this. <laughs> so then for the next 10 years until I was 16, I did lots of karate um, competition and stuff like this. Lots of training, hard training and went to the black belt and so I can defend you in the street if we need to. I think you can defend yourself if you want. I don't know. I saw you today trying to defend the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to protect the dog. I saw yeah. it. It was really impressive. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so that's what I did for a very long time on top of just, you know, studying. So my life was didn't have much time for, you know, freedom and other activities. It was pretty much you go to school and you make sure your homework are done on time and then you go to training. And then on the weekend you have competition and you better do some results, <laughs> you know, pressure. Those good parents. Yeah. <laughs> um, very strict parents too, but, you know. I think that it served me well in many ways. And they pushed me at school too. Um, and I studied scientific stuff in general. So I went to high school and started choosing scientific sector because my dad thought um, I couldn't really be an artist at the time. He thought artist is not real work. You have to do <laughs> you have to do something. And he said, until you actually know what do you want to do with your life? We suggest you start following scientific path, which, to be honest, in France, you're, when, when, even in high school, if you choose scientific options, you still have like lots of liter literature, philosophy, courses and lessons. So it's not like you're only going to do math, physics, you know, chemistry, biology, but I did all of this and um, that was in high school. And then at the end of high school, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be biology teacher, but then my parents said, we don't want you to be a teacher. <laughs> like, oh. like, what do you want me to, 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 yeah. to tell be? Me. You know, tell me, because I don't know what I want to be. Well, I had lots of ideas, but every time people would tell me no. Oh. So, is this dark enough already? <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> so good in there, yeah. No, they were just very controlling, and I think it came from a good place. It came from a place where they wanted me to... Um, uh, how can I say, like succeed and be financially stable later in life and have good values. And that's why they thought sports would give me good values and ethics or somehow something like that. And scientific sector, they thought, oh, she can be doctor or engineer or, you know, thinking this kind of way, which looking back at it now, I don't think it's the only way <laughs> to be financially stable, but that's what they thought. I think back in the day, mm. it was the way. And this is just what our parents have been taught. So generally, I like saying like the things that I'm doing right now, I couldn't even dream of as a kid because yeah. they didn't exist. Yeah. So it all went in so fast. I think our parents and us also, we couldn't keep up with it because yeah. now you can make money off YouTube and literally make a podcast in which you just talk with your friend and actually people listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's like something that we couldn't dream of it because like now every kid wants to be a YouTuber. I couldn't dream of being a YouTuber because there was no YouTube. Yeah. We're from this weird <laughs> generation that all of a sudden everything's there and we're like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Everything you do today, I don't think existed when you were a kid. I and think so, yeah. There was no podcast. It was radio talks you know, which is sort of equivalent oh, yeah. to podcasts. But you couldn't be on the radio as Lexi. You would have to find a job as a radio person. Um, yeah, that's a boring way. Person. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're flying machines that didn't exist. And True. yeah. So I guess it, it. that's what I said. It came from a good place from my parents. So I ended up uh, going to uni because in France, uni um, is free. Um However, only for me, it's a bit complicated. The first two years were free. And then the, 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 the other three years I did after that for a master's, we had to pay a bit for it. But it's nothing, nothing close to what people have to pay in Australia or even America. Um, How much is it, actually? So to give you an idea, my parents, without accommodation, because obviously you, s you still have to pay for flats and stuff, because mm -hmm. I didn't stay at my parents' place, I, I went away. But uh, the, the, the actual school was worth 900 euros a, a year. year. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why in People France... People of US are right now like, what? <laughs> but you know, <clears throat> and that, that's also, I think, this kind of thing that people recently didn't understand. Um, has influenced my view on how a country should work. And you know how recently we did those anonymous questions? Oh, yeah. Yeah, on Instagram, for people who don't follow us on Instagram, we you have this option of getting anonymous questions from yes, people. And you should follow us on Instagram, by the way. <laughs> if you want to. Even handles. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and, and some people were like, why do you have so 
such leftist ideas, like liberal ideas or whatever, they compare me to their oh, yeah. to their American politics, which I don't relate to. I don't follow American politics. I don't much. have leftist po uh, ideas because I don't know what's a left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, I'm not leftist. I, I come from France, where uni is free, healthcare is free. You easily get easily. It's not as easy these days, but when I was young, you could get child support if you were in trouble. Um, there's government housing. It is like people, you have minimum wage, but you also have, um, for people who are unemployed, you have a minimum amount of money they get every month as long as they're looking for work, you know, to help them support to, to not be on the street on and also it's not like they just get it because they get it they really have to actively look for a job take courses yeah. and just uh, make themselves better so it's not that you just decide i'm gonna be unemployed my entire life yeah uh, it doesn't work like that no yeah it's just saying <laughs> but you know and and to me these things are normal because i grew up with all of this and recently or, or even like you know be in control of your own body yeah. um this kind of stuff and when i see things being different in other countries i voice my opinion and then i'm being told that i'm leftist but i'm like you, you guys it, it happens differently in other countries of course i'm gonna have good i'm gonna have opinions from the, the country i come from yeah. so 900 euros a year that means that my parents probably maximum spent 3,000 counting like you know books that i needed to buy or whatever like sometimes equipment um yeah so you know it's it's it, it was i was lucky to to be in france for my studies and i forgot to say what i studied uh, mechanical engineering nice. <laughs> yeah nice. so i have a mechanical engineering background which was fun to study but then when i started doing internship as a mechanical engineer that's when i realized i just didn't like the job i just didn't like i didn't like um i liked the thinking and i liked solving problems but i didn't like um working on the topics i was working so my my first internship was making giant motors for mitsubishi boats so just like nice. the motors would be the size of your room here nice. just like a car like a car engine but the size nice. of your room nice so i had to just yeah mm. work on that second internship i was working um i was designing a a plastic extruding machine so <laughs> it's very specific <laughs> I don't know if yeah, you I'm interested. so when you have a company that uh, for example creates plastic tubes mm -hmm. like for your gardening hose mm -hmm. uh, you have all the process where the plastic is melted and then it gets molded and then it gets it gets harder but at the end of that uh, line you have a machine that's pulling the tube Mm -hmm. And then after that machine, you have the one that rolls it uh, in like giant. Uh -huh. Well, I was designing the machine that was pulling the tube. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm like, how did I find that job? Well, it's interesting. You know. I'm actually, I, I'm wondering like, guys, if you are shocked that she has an engineer degree, <laughs> let us know in the comments on the Nigiri and Co. Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. Or if you are watching it on YouTube, then on YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Oh, actually, let us know what things actually shocked you throughout the entire thing. Yeah. Like, what were you assuming and what assumptions have been totally wrong? Because this is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, I'm yeah. curious to know. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's going to be interesting. So anyway. Yeah. Continue. And then the, the last internship is more like when I realized I really didn't want to do this. It was actually not the, pro the project was cool. I was in research and development again and um, I ended up. It was designing a pump for, um, I don't know actually what was going to be used like in that pump. There were some contracts with countries like Iran. No, yeah, I think there was Iran in the list and they never told us what they were going to do with the pump. And I'm like, I'm not sure I like this part of the job because I'm designing stuff that look innocent, like a, just a fluid a pump for, it could be for water, but I'm like, what if it's used for other things that I ethically wouldn't agree with. So, <laughs> um, it scares me just a little. It's yeah, okay. and also okay. somehow they they made me understand that I was doing all this cool research and development stuff while I was in an internship. But the other engineers that were working in all these companies, they were all day just use Excel spreadsheets and doing budgets, and they were not designing things anymore. Like, and I just thought. Well, first off, I don't like the project I'm working on. I like the designing part but or creating stuff, but I don't like 
what it's going to be used for. I don't like it ethically speaking. Mm. And then I uh, like uh, I thought uh, once I'm an engineer, I might not work on that anymore. I'm just going to work on a very small part of a project because I had the, the chance, you know, for, for the, the extruding machine or for the pump. At least I was designing the whole thing. And I'm like, one day maybe I'm going to be hired in a in a car uh, business, like for Audi or whatever. And all I'm going to design is maybe the, I don't know, the light bulb at the front. <laughs> like, you know, how, how it's going to work. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. And most projects, you never see the end of it because once you finish your project, it gets sent to somewhere else. And that wasn't my thing. And I felt like I was always a creative person. And this would, even the, the slight creativity that I was getting from my internships, I thought one day they would be taken away from me. Mm. So it was very dark time, very depressed, crying to the to the job. Like I was not working because it was intern, but I was still being paid and crying every day in the car, going there, crying, coming back. And that's when I had the idea of moving to Australia. Because it was like, okay, I'm graduating in at the time. I had four months left at uni. And I thought, okay, <laughs> I know what I don't want to do and I still don't know what I want to do. That's really good that you don't that you know what you don't want to do, by the way. <laughs> That's actually, it's, it's actually helpful. It's, it's a good advice. If you don't know what, what you want to do, try things and try to see what you don't want to do. Yeah, and um, uh, actually, if you know right away what you don't want to do, just skip it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so at the time I was with... Um, my ex-partner and he was also quite lost he didn't mind doing engineering job but i feel like he didn't like working for people mm. i think he had more uh, an entrepreneur kind of spirit but didn't know where to start because we would be soon fresh out of uni and you're like you still don't have money because you're not paid and even though you you know like i said uni is free um internships were not paying much and and your parents, they're still working. They, they're not going to give you money for him, for example, to start a business. Like, how do you start? You have to start working for someone before you can work for yourself. And I thought maybe a good break would be nice. But I didn't want to, to go on holiday and not do anything. So I thought if I go somewhere where I can be fluent in English, I feel like in today's world, it's going to be an asset, you know, a, a good investment. <laughs> so I had some savings. I had enough savings because I had saved since I was a kid, <laughs> lots of money. Um, so I spent it all in plane tickets and a van, like an old van from 1980. When I, <laughs> I think it was 1988 or something like this. Uh, when I arrived in Perth, WA in Australia after I graduated. Um, and that's where uh, everything changed. <laughs> We're so there. much. I forgot to mention that that last year when I was doing this internship at the pump thing, that's when also I sort of got into drones thanks to my partner because he had started building a drone that was with an Arduino plastic frame. Oh, yeah. yeah, like full oh, of vibrations yes. with like a GoPro Hero 3 on it or something like that. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and he flew that around our building complex like in the garden that we all had and people were looking through their windows like what's what's that noise because the thing was this big and he bought me a mini drone to fly indoors as well but obviously when we moved to australia all of this we had to leave behind because we're gonna live in a van <laughs> you can't really have drones and shit <laughs> and moving stuff to australia is expensive i know it firsthand yeah you just did it this year <laughs> I moved here with 40 kilograms of things and 20 of them was actually drone stuff. Yeah. You actually came with drone stuff. I did. You did. <laughs> you I had did. to. With some drone stuff. Not all of it. I sold some. That's coming. I gave away some too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's nice. That's, nice. That's so generous. Life. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we will know in the next episode. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, I moved to Australia <clears throat> with the idea of being a backpacker. So working and then traveling when I would have redone my savings that I had just spent for <laughs> the travel and yeah. the van. Um, yeah, and I was in Western Australia, in Perth, and uh, I, w I lived with an Australian family, which was really cool. Like, straight away, you, I could get a bit of the culture, you know, like <laughs> Australian culture. They were slightly Vegemite. bogan. 
<laughs> but not too I bargain. learned what's a bargain not so long ago. So. <laughs> Just slightly. But they were also like into horse racing. Like they, they actually had horses that would go and compete. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they would sell horses. I think they currently have a horse who's competing in Melbourne. Um, you know, at Coalfield and Flemington races. Not that I actually think horse racing is a good thing, but because I like the people at the time. So I was living with them because um, we were working for them. It's called Help X. So you, in exchange of services, you can live at someone's place. So I had my van parked in their garden and we do lots of tasks for them, like feeding horses. They had chicken, uh, like a, l l a like big chickens. property. <laughs> you like chicken. Like chicken. <laughs> we just had chicken for lunch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I meant uh, I like the animal. Oh, okay, I thought you meant you like chicken to eat. <laughs> Not do. <laughs> okay. We're going for the chicken later too. <laughs> yeah, actually, we ate so much chicken we today. We made the steaks today. Yeah, continue. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um. So worked for them, and at the same time, found a job in a plant nursery. And that's where, you know, you have a manual work that is quite repetitive. You're planting stuff every day. So either you're like in a, in a small house, like a, f a small facility, you sit and you, you, you plant like things that are this amount. Or you, you go outside and, and you have to put stuff in pots. Like <laughs> you have to. And that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, very repetitive. And that's when your mind can think. And that's what I started thinking, okay. What are all the things I could do that I think I would like doing? And at the time, I went back to thinking I could be a teacher. So what I was planning, I'm like, okay, maybe once I spend a year or two in Australia, because I knew I could stay two years maximum, uh, I can go back and be an English teacher. And I don't care what my parents think, you know. At the time, being in that nursery and doing this job outside, meeting other backpackers, I was the happiest I had been in years. I felt free. I felt like I was doing what I wanted to do. I felt like I was doing something else, learning about doing actual things like growing plants was a good feeling after spending, you know, five years studying about math, phys physics and stuff like that. I was just like, yeah, which, by the way, also, I think some of people <coughs> actually need to go outside and touch some grass. <laughs> yeah. For real, like the yeah. messages I'm getting you guys should really sometimes go and touch some grass. But in general, a lot of people should have some plants or grow food. Yeah. Like I have a couple of foodies there. They're yeah. Growing just I on so. the window. Yeah. So it actually helps a lot when you can grow something. It feels like the first drone you built and it works. And it's this feeling of, oh my God, I did this. So it's the same with food. Yeah. But it's happening every single time when I, when something grows, I'm like, I did this. Yeah. I'm going to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really rewarding. Yeah, it is. And I do think that psychologically speaking, because I was doing something completely foreign that what yeah. I was doing I was with people with a different culture even though it's still western culture let's be honest it is. Um, but you know and di speaking different language would show you that there's always barriers that you have to how can I overcome. say overcome and it makes you more open minded about people living in different countries and stuff like that with different background and I also it's eye opening I think yeah the, the, it's, it's actually a thing like I was talking about it with RG yesterday that when you move from country to country you literally force yourself to do all the new things start the new habits because you cannot actually do your old habits and if there, there was a lot of bad of them then even greater uh, and it just really forces you to be in a brand new place and start everything anew and it doesn't matter if you move to another country actually or just to another city because there's a lot of new things and if you are feeling really stagnant and you don't know what to do and you feel just stuck move yeah 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 it's there's a difference between moving and doing exactly the same thing expecting different results you know what i mean like um yeah you can go on the other side of the world and i could have been like well maybe i'm just going to look for an engineer job that would have been stupid yeah. what do you mean is moving change. and change and getting out of your comfort zone and only good can come come out i feel but it's not also like we're just entitled <coughs> and stuff like this if you cannot move you cannot move you can yeah. just uh, rearrange your apartment do some changes and just yeah. try to change something just try to force yourself it actually helps a lot yeah i think that's right you have to we have to remember that lots of people cannot move to the other side of the world right but the the moving somewhere else sometimes pushes you to think out of the box and make changes yeah. and if you don't move then you have to force yourself to be like i'm really unhappy now 
what could I do to completely change what yeah. I'm doing? Um, and, and it's important because that's my, my boyfriend, my current boyfriend always says the same. Um, if you do the same thing over and over and expect different outcomes, then you, you're a crazy person because it's that's not going to happen. That's what said. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Are you sure we're not dating the same person? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's what Einstein said. I can show you, like, Google it. Uh, okay. There's a quote with Einstein's face on it. Ah, <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't know. Maybe Sean knows it's from, it's from Einstein, but yeah. Mm. Um, Anyway, um, and all this time, like I'm, I'm sort of some trying to to be quick and summarize things. Yeah. But what I forgot to say is, my whole life up to the nursery point, I had felt anxious about everything because there was so much pressure put on me to perform, which is nice because it teaches you value of hard work and pushing yourself and pushing your limits. Um, but it came with so much anxiety that I never felt like I enjoyed my life up to when I was 23, putting seeds in, in in soil and you know I'm so great and my <laughs> life changed when I was in the nursery <laughs> yeah. I was putting the, the seeds yeah. into the soil and changed my life <laughs> well <laughs> nice. it's a bit metaphorical it's a good thing we should make a t-shirt of it <laughs> <laughs> yes I wasn't happy until I planted seed <laughs> but it's sort of true available in merch store right now <laughs> <laughs> but that's something you mentioned today actually um you told me before we started recording you you are still scared of financially failing and then oh, being yeah. we'll go to my dark stuff in the next episode but that was <laughs> so even though i was finally i felt like i was happy and doing an adventure and following my heart the the pressure of performing this time was not put on by someone else on me i was putting it myself yeah on me because I thought, I don't want to go back to France, at least yet at the time. I was like, I want to stay as long as I can here and learn and figure out what I want to do with my life. But I was always scared of not performing well at the nursery and then get fired because the boss was super strict. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, be... good girl. Yes. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I was scared of, of, of uh, thinking... No, sorry, I was thinking um, I had to perform well and, and not lose my job as a backpacker. And the thing as a backpacker is, you know, you have a job for like four, six months, yeah. but then you don't know what's next. Yeah. So not only I was trying to, to to think about what I wanted to do in general with my life, I also had to think every time short term. And anyway, I'm trying to, to forward, um, <laughs> to fast forward a bit. <laughs> um, finished that job at the nursery and now it was time to travel a bit. Because I was like, well, now I'm going to enjoy being in Australia. So I did a, a huge road trip for three months. Went to Bali, like was cool. Um, and then came back and then again, I need to find a job. And that's where I found the job where most people discovered my YouTube channel at that time is when I was in the Northern Territory. Um, which is desert for people who don't know Australia. It's just nothing. There's nothing in there. There's like literally nothing. <laughs> and I was working uh, in, as a cook in a kitchen for, for school, um, indigenous school. That was in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere with um, indigenous community. Um, and that's where I really found myself, to be honest. Like, I was just like, I never want to be an engineer anymore. I don't want to be as in the scientific thing like I want to be so with something something that involves being with people and making people feel good and I still had no idea what it would be and I was around teachers a lot obviously I was thinking maybe not teacher I need to find something else but just cooking for two years and a half for kids and also cleaning you know cleaning after them the toilets and um, that was after I cook, obviously. You know, the of course, <laughs> stuff comes back in. Uh, cleaning classrooms and stuff like that. You know, um, it was also lots of time to think and lots of time for FPV. That's where FPV came back in my life. And that's where people discovered my channel at the start. Um, and then creating videos. Yeah, I, I found that I, I wanted to do this, you know, uh, telling stories. And then I remembered at that time, that when I was a kid, I loved making stories. I, lo I loved writing. Um, I would you know, write stories and, and then draw things to, <laughs> to go with it and show my parents. And they just thought it was funny. But the few times I had said to my parents, I want to be an author, they would just laugh and be like, Aww. no one, yeah. <laughs> and be like, 
it's not a if this, someone tells you their dream just do not love because <laughs> i was just don't i loved reading too and that was my whole life i was a very introvert kid um and they just said it's okay keep it as a hobby but you will never be able to to do it as a living i love when people believe in you <laughs> they believed in me good parenting <laughs> there's nothing better than the support of your family they were a bit pessimistic but yeah. i mean maybe it was wise from them to do that maybe. i don't know but i remember that also at the time when i was younger but then we had computer my dad had, had a laptop with powerpoint on it oh and I used to make stories. So there was stock image in Microsoft. Like you could find insert image oh anywhere. God, yeah. They had like, I so that. I would make mini, mini movies on PowerPoint. Oh. So for example, there was like, I did one with spies in a facility. So I had found images of a, I don't know, like a sort of factory. And then the, the text would appear like, you know, in those movies with the military type of writing. Oh my God, and you would hear so like, cool. <laughs> And I was doing that when I was like 10 or 11, you know. Um, so all that I had forgotten because when you, you grow up, somehow you forget what your inner child wanted. And then back in the Northern Territory, when I started making videos because I had so, so much time, I didn't even start doing videos with drones. I, I first started doing videos because I was filming myself playing music. And then I wanted to make clips for songs I liked, video clips. So I was going on Shutterstock and stuff like that to find um, images that people had captured and then I would make um, a clip for, I'll put the link in the video, I made a video clip for a Green Day song. Oh, I, you know? I watched it. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> so I thought, I love this, you know, and I had forgotten I loved telling stories. And at the same time, my ex found FPV and drones. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's amazing because now on top of my normal camera, I can have a drone and have a different perspective. And that's how it all started, you know. And then since then, I feel like people know more what happened after that, you know. Like YouTube grew. I did um, a road trip in the US and I met all the pilots I wanted to meet. We started talking at the same time, you know. And then I moved to Melbourne, uh, broke up with my partner because behind the scene things were not so well <laughs> um but you know that's how i found my way to drones and to the current life i have and in melbourne i started working in um, a hobby store people knew that for a while like they 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 remembered that and they some people still think i work at the hobby store <laughs> but i don't and um, at the hobby store i was building drones fixing drones and also just working general rc stuff um and then thanks to uh, a good friend, Snake FPV, I found my first job in drones because someone quit um, in the company he was working for. So he said, do you want to come and replace them because you're going to be a great addition. And all of that happened. It's it's weird because all these years now seem squished like together because that was just before COVID. And then COVID yeah. happened and I lost everything again. And now I found a job, you know, that I love doing in construction video photography um, and it's so interesting to think that na what I'm doing now telling stories through my videos for work on top of YouTube that I have been reduced on YouTube obviously but all of this is actually that's my Siri <laughs> my, nice. Siri, my Siri is male <laughs> listening to you all the time <laughs> yeah he's listening to me <laughs> that is the but ideal he's listening that's <laughs> Ideal male is listening to me. <laughs> oh no, it's I'm joking. So I feel bad for all the men who I listen. Just, I wanted to say, I I smiled to you so bad. Probably when you saw it, and I really just wanted to say that you found yourself again where you should in the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> That's why you were smiling. I found myself I really in the kitchen. I wanted to throw it in, but I was like, this is so wrong. It is, it's true. In so, the... yeah, I was like, like, like a woman should. Does that, like kitchen. a woman, you should have done that <laughs> plan at the time. I just got it. <laughs> I found myself in the kitchen. Oh, <laughs> Ironically. <was> so <laughs> Ironically. <yeah. laughs> I was like, I was so good. I forgot to mention, I had a great friend at the time working with me in the kitchen and she was supportive of everything she's in one of my youtube videos i think it's like i made my friend fly a, a drone or something like that and she's great at it actually oh. uh, she picked right. it up very quickly oh. but she had no interest she was yeah. like oh that's such a shame because you're good at it and she's like yeah it's fine and then she didn't really but she wanted to do it because she was my friend you know and she was oh, okay. um anyway yeah and that's that's all how it happened i feel like i obviously i haven't 
told many things that that I forgot, you know, but that's generic my life, you know, from like six years old to who I am today and um and I'm happy now, but it's been a journey. I feel like I've simplified the path a lot, but all of this, even staying in Australia, I didn't explain, you know, how it happened. It was lots of paperwork, lots of hard work, pushing to find sponsorship, um, to, to be able to stay. That's why I stayed also so long. And it's not a sponsorship that someone pays, it's a sponsorship <coughs> that someone sponsors your visa. Yeah, so someone agrees. So it doesn't even mean they pay for it, it just means they agree to sign it. Yeah, and... And, and then they're responsible for you and you ha you have commitment to them like yeah. it's it's actually you have to be pretty much at the right place at the right time um and also have skills they want and uh, i got my sponsorship people are going to be like but you were a cook because that's where i got it but the reason why i got sponsorship is because of my education and because i had the master's degree in mechanical engineering that was on the on the skill list and it didn't matter that i wasn't a mechanic like a, an engineer when I was being sponsored um, as long as I had the qualifications that I could use maybe later or stuff like that so. oh yeah that's also a thing because I used to say that I really regret going to my university because mm. I felt like it was a waste of time but mm -hmm. uh, it actually helped me get the visa that I'm here on right now because I, I have this skill yeah and I was like Everything happens for a reason. It, it is crazy. You <laughs> know, you it, if you think too much of it, the number of time where my life could have been different, the time I was really going to go into biology was just before engineering. But then the problem, I was super interested into biology, whether it, it's, you know, this is why also I've been vocal, you know, during the <laughs> during COVID with vaccine. I forgot to mention that my major in high school was biology. So I learned Mine everything too. about... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we learned everything about how DNA works and reproduction, everything that recently we've been vocal about. We have a background on it and we know what we're talking about. Man. And I was so interested in it that, you know, I, I, I considered doing um, high-end bio biology for uni, but then the only outcome of that was becoming a vet or something like that. Like the, the, the opportunities after studying a lot of biology were not crazy or you can become you know uh, you can go to research but research i wanted to be a pathologist a what like the, the pathologist the person that cuts people after they're dead to check why ah, they died that's cool but then someone told me that first i need to be a doctor and actually save a lot of people oh, and yeah. i was like no that, i'm not interested in that I'm interested <laughs> once in they're done part. and <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's not going to the dark part. It's because I didn't want to deal with clients that are complaining. <laughs> and I thought that this is the perfect job that I can have because my clients are literally dead. So it's so funny. I didn't know you wanted to do this. because I the, did. When I lost my job at the drone thing with Snake, yeah. I looked for any job and I actually thought, you know what? Why couldn't I work in a morgue? I don't oh, mind. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, looked. Your, your clients just are just dead they cannot complain yeah. after, t after working in retail and then I had a break of drone industry I thought I don't want to go back to retail I don't want to go back in a kitchen maybe I should just work with dead people <laughs> it's so funny you had the same thought <laughs> it will go to my past but that was that was one of the things that I wanted to do because of what my mom and dad said wow and yeah they told me I need to be a doctor first and I was like no I'm not interested in that part <laughs> So I guess I'll skip it. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with everything happens for a reason. Um, and it's been a struggle, uh, but I'm grateful. You know, I come from a, when I was younger, my parents were lower, lower class. But then once I was more in high school, I feel like they were already sort of middle class. So I'm grateful. I don't think what happened to me uh, would have happened if we've, we've always stayed low class type of things. Because I said I had saving because every time for my birthday, they were giving me, you know, like 20 euros or 10 euros, I would put it away. And I would do that all the time for Christmas. And if my grandparents were giving me money, I would not use it and put it away. But you have to have money in the first place to move to Australia. Yeah. Like to give you an idea, um, I think my savings were about 5,000 euros when I was 23. I had saved for my three internships as well, you know, but that means also in 23 years I was able to save that and not everybody can do that yeah. so my parents were gutted that <laughs> I was spending my money on one trip 
to change my life after, you know, backing me up for so long with um, my studies. And in a way, I'm glad that they didn't have to pay or I didn't have to pay, you know, with a, a student loan crazy money oh for my God, studies yeah. everything i do feel that i've been privileged enough to make the big move and change my life like i hated i didn't it's not that i hated my life but it started you have to be careful with your life because you make small choices that you don't want to do every time they're little and that's because people and push it p- p- yeah it's Snow subtle really you don't notice you make you make a compromise which is not really a compromise you actually concede something and and you do another choice that is not really yours and you do and you thought your life would be this way and suddenly you're 20 something and you realize it's, your life is it's there. like you climb the ladder but then when you're on top it turns out that it's laying on the wrong wall yeah exactly that's a good yeah metaphor it's and it's really like a wrong wall and then you look on the other side and like oh no and <laughs> even though you know i had a good life you know single kids parents together not divorced parents who were climbing on the ladder like my mom didn't work on the right wall my dad (laughs) (laughs) my mom did work but she was doing like little like she was cleaning people's houses or um just being a nanny for kids and my dad was an electrician um so i didn't have i people might be like oh you hated your life but i didn't it's more like the result of all the wrong little choices i made to please other people that made me realize my life is not nothing like what I thought it would be. Mm. And I'm glad that it, I realized it when I was 20 and actually realized it because I had lost a friend during my studies. Um, of, uh, at uni, like a friend of mine just died very young. Um, and that made me realize, damn, we can, I can die tomorrow. <laughs> I, can, I can go. Well, it, it's not like I didn't know it, but because it happened to someone I knew, I just thought... I'm, a, I'm quite unhappy with where my life is heading. I could die tomorrow. And at the moment, all I have if I die would be regrets. So I need to change that. That sounds really dark. And it's getting <laughs> that's, darker. A, that's it. With a second. With so a second. It's getting worse. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just like... <laughs> no, don't worry. I've already told that to, m- to my current boss. And I said... Oh, <laughs> at, the t- great. <laughs> at the time, I felt like it was awful. But now we're talking 10 years later to yeah. when I realized this because I realized this when I was 21 and I'm like oh, I'm so glad and if I had to die tomorrow I actually don't mind <laughs> so it's, a good, great. it's a good story like with everything I've done with FPV can you believe that we've we've been flying drones that we didn't even know existed you know when we were younger I've, I've traveled thanks to FPV um Everything I've done as a backpacker, I have the job I wanted to do. I, I do things like a podcast with people that matter, you know. <laughs> yeah. Aww. And and I do think that some people, you know, when we say, oh, they have midlife crisis. Unfortunately, they didn't get the opportunity to realize that before. And I'm so glad it happened oh. to me at 20 and not 40. Um, That's true. And hopefully it keeps going. Since then, I made a point that all the choices I make... I have to be happy about it. And it has, and if at some stage I get unhappy, and we've Just talked about it. this today, yeah, we, we talked about it. you'd really need to think about it, give it a good thought and be like, am I happy? If not, what do I do? And when do I do it? Because if you wait too long, it's just wasting Yeah, it's energy. like a vicious cycle. So you don't do anything with it. And it just goes on and on and on and on and you are getting even more frustrated and angry at yourself that you are not doing the thing that you want to do <laughs> and it just creates even more stress on you you are even more angry on yourself and it's just a really vicious cycle of being angry and all of this energy the negative energy gets on you and you feel tired yeah you're, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired <clears throat> and it's really bad because then you don't really have energy to do anything about it anymore because you've just spent all of this energy on thinking of all of those things that make you mad yeah so yeah just do something move (laughs) yeah or uh, think out of the box if you can and i know so i was actually saying that because i said well i had financial support to help change things but then later on in my life i've been stuck in australia financially it's been complicated like when i broke up with my partner i i didn't know what to do i didn't want to break with him at the time because i was like 
I don't, I won't have a car. Uh, I don't have enough money, definitely not, um, to, to, to go on my own rent a place. Like I didn't have anything. And, um, I still made the change, uh, you know, because I, I, I thought I had to make the change and somehow it would work. So the whole point was like me telling or oh, Lexi and I telling you, you need to make changes. I don't want it to sound too easy because the first time, it's not easy. first time, yeah, because the first time I could financially, but there's been other times in my life where it was definitely not the ideal time to make a change, but you have to, because if you're unhappy, then you know i i yeah you're gonna be very depressed and that's what happened to me because i waited too long to make that change happen because i thought i couldn't and then i coped with years of therapy you know after that so and by the way therapy is expensive too <laughs> yeah yeah so if you think oh it's like <coughs> the same with eating really healthy you feel like i get the fact that currently going to mcdonald's is actually cheaper than cooking at home it's true yeah it's really true <laughs> but in the long term, you know how much you're going to pay for doctors, uh, operations, pills, and all the type of things? You better eat healthy. You're going to save money on that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, especially okay, when you've only been like... friends and healthcare is not free. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> the liberal in me is talking again. Yeah, we're leftist. <laughs> so anyway, my camera is dying. Ah, so damn. 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 Well, switch uh, the battery or I think just finish? how long have we been? Recording? 47 minutes. Cool. Been, I think that's, great. that's it. We no, okay. just need to tell the people who have listened to that, that we have video now. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we do have video now. If you are listening to this podcast or if you want to see us just sitting on the couch, making weird faces and waving to you right now. That's it. Uh, subscribe to this channel, of course, for more. We are tr going to try to get more of a videos upcoming to you and follow us on instagram and onigiri and co if you are just listening to us you can also listen to us on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast thank you thank you very much and we'll hear you again in two weeks and you're gonna hear some dark stuff <laughs> from lexi <laughs> yes it's great okay see you later guys bye, bye. Mm, no we can wait <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> bye